Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're going to do an unboxing of Red Flag Over Paris, the 1871 Rise and Fall of the Paris Commune. It's a game designed by Fred Serval it's from GT Games. Uh, it's a smaller box than some of their normal games. It's a uh, you know smaller width, smaller height. Uh, thickness is about the same. Well, wants to slam around in there. Um, it is designed for one to two players. Uh, solo su suitability is high, and complexity is almost between medium and easy. And we will crack it open, take a look what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right. So, it does note right on the side of the box there that it is a card-driven game. So yeah, definitely a definitely an odd, odd size here. Nothing wrong with it, just not a normal GMT box size. So maybe they're experimenting with different sizes. Anyway, start with rulebook, rules of play. This is on their uh, new and not improved glossy white uh cardstock as you see it picks up the shine so I'm not a fan their older rule books were much better with the uh, matte finish but that's what you get and it is a it is kind of a normal size which is good um, so those are the rules of play it is 12 pages so not very very dense um, usual starts off with a component list describing the card so on and so forth and the rules so Let's see if there's any. It's like victory comes on page eight. And then you get into the solo opponent rules, which are then covered there. So, eight pages of base game rules. And then you get into the solo rules, uh, the game end. So, the solo rules are about page eight through barely on 11, and then a glossary. So, it's not, not really rules heavy. So, that's good. It's a 12 page rule book. Then we've got the playbook. Now this is a monster. This is pretty thick. This is 44 pages. And on the back of this, they have solo opponent reminders for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, so this gives you a two player example of play, a solo example of play, and then historical notes. So rather than being a scenario book, GMT is always varied as to what the playbook is. Sometimes it's this, sometimes it's advanced rules, sometimes it's scenarios. You know, for the game you're going to play, it's the playbook. But uh, anyway, in this case, it's got two detailed examples of play for two players and solo, and then historical notes about the time period. The solo example is about eight pages. The two player example appears to be, oh, about 12. They're full color. They show the cards that are in play. You can set up. The good thing about this is you can set up the game uh, and act that you know carry out the actions on the board, so you see how it happens. So if I go here, this happens. If I go there, this happens. That kind of thing, and learn how to play the game. So it's the Commune versus the Versailles. So this is a very detailed. A lot, of, uh, a lot of graphics to show you how it works. And then we have the solo. I miss it. Final Crisis Round. Oh, there we go in the solo example play. Starts on 15. So, anyway, that goes through 44 pages. Here's the. Uh, Information about the various cards, player uh, designer notes, so on and so forth. Um, gives you the pronunciation key for the cards, for the you know, the stuff so Americans will butcher it. So that's cool. All right, I do like I do like the smaller rule book. I'm not sure about the smaller box, but I like the smaller rule book. It's pretty nice. All right, then we got two reference cards here. One is for the Commune solo opponent, so you can play Versailles against the Commune, and one's for the Versailles solo opponent, so you can play the Commune against the Versailles. So that's kind of neat. Instead of just being, I can only play one faction, 
you can play either. And then we've got the game board. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And then we have some cards. We'll pop those open in just a second. We've got a bag of wooden stuff. We've got some, some uh, markers and large cubes and discs and the uh, you know, traditional uh, cylinders that uh, like a coin game might have with stars on one side. Um, but it's not a coin game, don't get me wrong. So, a bag of that. We have a die, one die, one six-sided die. That will probably always roll low when I roll it. So let's see, does it roll low? It rolls a two. Yeah, that probably means uh, you die on the first turn and your game is over. All right, let's check out these cards. So this is Versailles Initiative. All right, so the cards here are a standard uh, poker-sized deck, about two and a half by three and a half. So we have a initiative card, Versailles Commune. Uh, then we have objective cards, and then we have a deck of strategy cards. It looks like a shared deck. They're not different per um, per side, per side, per side. So we have objective cards. So objective Paris cannons, control boot Montmartre. Use up to three operations points in Paris spaces or increase your player momentum. So these are various objectives you have. Commune stronghold, fighting in a sea village. Battle of Mont Valerian. My French is horrible, so you'll forgive me, hopefully. Raid on Chateau de Vincennes. Revolution in the press. Hey! I pronounced that one correctly. That's pretty good. Pius IX. Control the Catholic Church. Place an opponent's cubes in two different political spaces. Or remove one from any space. Alright, so these are different objective cards that come into the come into play. And then strategy cards. They've got different values, which I guess can be used for like a regular card driven game that can be used for some standard actions or specifically the events that are on them, so on and so forth. So, uh, and then they affect, obviously one side affects the Versailles, one side affects the Commune. So you can place a barricade in a Paris space where you are present. And I'm sure the pair of spaces are going to be obvious when we look at the board. So let's go ahead and crack that open and take a look at that. All right, so this is the map for uh, Red Flag over Paris. And it's not a big map. It's only uh, uh, about the size of the rule book times four. Um, we have a uh, cube, uh, spots for a cube pool, spots for the Versailles, spots for the Commune. Um, and that's basically, you know, a, an abstracted representation. So we've got those Paris spaces here, which are purple. And then the political locations. And obviously you have paths that go from the Catholic Church to the Royalists, to the press, to social movements, so on and so forth. The press is the center of everything, or at least they think they are. Uh, National Assembly, Republicans, Royalists, Mont Valerian, Fort Dissy, Dissy. We have objective cards, we have the rounds. Uh, it's interesting, there only appears to be three rounds. Uh, and then a final uh, conflict. I believe we saw that in the playbook. And then it says cube pool here. I don't know if this is a cube pool track or if this is a, you know, victory point track, kind of going back and forth. Um, but that is in the rules, and that is not something we're going over right now on how to play. So. Let's put this back in the box and do a recap of everything you get. All right, so if you pick up a copy of Red Flag Over Paris by GMT Games, you are going to get the two, the one deck of cards that has objective and strategy decks and an initiative card. You're going to get a bag of wooden bits. You're gonna get one die. Hey, you got a five, that's much better. You're gonna get a reference card for the Versailles solo opponent, the Commune solo opponent. You are going to get that game board we looked at. You are going to get a 44 page playbook and a 12 page rules of playbook. 
And that's everything you get in Red Flag Over Paris, 1871, Rise and Fall of the Paris Commune, designed by Fred Serval and put out by GMT Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!